Welcome to the Compel Family Life Center, where our leader is Superintendent Aaron Robbins and our amazing First Lady, Dr. Lacey Robbins. We are located at 6918 West Brown Deer Road in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53223. Join us for worship as we are committed to Christ, family, and community. At Compel, we have something for everyone and we meet the whole family in worship. Thanks for joining us today. You won't leave the same. Hey everybody, I'm so glad to see you this evening. God is good. We we pray that all is well with you. So glad that you have tuned in and you are listening to us live here at the Compel Family Life Center. Well, the building is closed, y'all. But I have told you so many times, the Lord is still working. We are still working in the kingdom of God. And I am so glad today that God has allowed us another opportunity to come and to share the word of life, of the word of God. The word of God gives life. The word of God brings light to our life. And I pray that what we have prepared for you today is going to be something that you want to listen to and you want to share. I want you to do, do me a favor very quickly before we get started, before we pray. I want everybody now to get you some friends and family minds in your, in your spirit now. I want you to, if you know how to start a watch party, do it now. Go create a watch party. If you can create a post on your Facebook page, uh, on your YouTube, I want you to tag and send it out to as many family and friends that you know literally right now. I, God has given me a word, and I want to share it with you all. And I literally believe that this is going to be something that is going to be amazing, something that your family, something that you're going to be blessed. It's going to encourage you, but it's going to challenge you because in this hour, we need to hear from God right now. So go ahead, do it right now. Go and share, tag somebody, share it with as many of you, as, as many of you that you can. Uh, we want to be in connection with you literally at this moment in time. All right, I know you've already done it. Again, good to see everybody. So glad that you have joined in with us on today. But this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. God is faithful. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to come before these, your people. Lord, we ask that you would be with us. I pray that we speak what you have given us to say. I pray of clarity of mind, thought, and spirit. I pray that your anointing be, be, be in this place right now. I pray that everything that is said, it comes, it gives you glory, it gives you honor. I pray even now that someone in the name of Jesus is blessed. Whoever is battling, whoever is dealing with things that are at war with in their spirit, in their heart, in their home, I rebuke the hand of the enemy. And I command Satan to take your hands off God's people in the name of Jesus. And I pray right now, God, you do it. You fix it. I pray the victory come over each and every person in this in this moment and this time. And Father, we take no glory unto ourselves, but Lord, we give it to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. So good to see everybody. I pray that you are having a wonderful week. And uh, this is our moment that we share the word of God. And we believe that in this moment and in this time, God is speaking with clarity. I believe that God is speaking and he's speaking with power. And uh, God is literally doing some amazing, powerful things. We started a series uh, dealing with maturing or building our confidence in God. And I want to uh, expound upon that on this past Sunday. We were able to give you one of the strategies. And one of the strategies we talked about on Sunday was about renewing your mind. And we want to go a little bit further today about that. We want to expound upon that because in this hour, the enemy's job is to cause us to miss him. Well, how, how do we miss him? I'm going to tell you how we easily miss God. We can easily miss God by allowing the enemy to destroy our confidence in God. How does he do it? It was very simple. What he does is he loves to use uh, discrediting God or, dis, uh, or causing us to be shamed of who God is uh, in this hour. Uh, how does he do it? It's simple. He causes people to get sick who are saved. He causes folk to suffer who, who live right. Uh, he causes people to be in pain. They haven't done anything to deserve it. And he would cause us to feel like, oh, God is not good or God is not worthy or he's not real. Well, let me tell you all something. 
There is a consistent battle between our feelings, which is our nature in us, and the Spirit of God, which is also in, the, in us. But there's a constant battle. There's a constant warfare. And this is the moment, y'all, that our confidence in God is a priority. I want you to hear me today. Your confidence in God is a priority. Why? Let me tell you, it's bigger than just you. There is there are those who are literally watching your spirit, watching your continents, watching your verse, your language, your posture. And if you're allowing the enemy to talk through you or or uh, or, or, or or talk through your body language or to your attitude. This is not an hour to be lazy, but this is an hour that we are consistently pursuing what God has for us. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, grab your Bibles, go to the word of the Lord. I gave it to you on Sunday, but I want to share with, share you, share with you that scripture again in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and 36, where it says these words, cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, for we have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. The word is patience, y'all. That is the key. We've got to be patient. I know right now none of us want to be stuck in the house, but y'all, we got to be patient. We've got to wait on God. And while we're waiting on God, our confidence has to be of such a point that God, whatever you're doing in this season, I trust you. That whatever, what, what, why, why you have me in this season, why you have all of us uh, separated, God, I believe you. I'm going to trust everything you're doing, everything you're providing. Let me tell you the kind of God we serve. Some of us are living better now unemployed than when we were when we were working. Some of us are living better than what we were when we were going to a nine to five, God got you in the house, literally handling your own career. Can I tell y'all something? Literally, y'all, before the quarantine, I was a local preacher, but God turned me into a televangelist literally in 24 hours. I'm going to tell you, we serve a God that can change everything like that. And I want y'all to get this in your spirit today. You are not in the dump. You are not done with. You are, it is not, y'all better hear pastor today. It is not over for you because somebody has died or somebody has sickness or because the world has, does not have a vaccine or the president wants to open the government up and open up the economy and the states don't want to. Let me tell y'all something. God is bigger than your situation. God is bigger than your issue, but you got to get your confidence where it should be. It is not in your look. It is not in your design. All of us need to get our hair done now. It's not in your hair design. It's not in your nails. It is not in your look, but it's your posture. What does your posture look like? All right, y'all got to start sharing. Y'all know how we do. You got to start liking. You got to start commenting. This is the hour, y'all, that in the hour of isolation, you have got to be loud about it. I am trusting God. I am, the world is worried. The world is in panic. The world is full of fear, but God did not give us the spirit of fear. The Bible says we have the, we have love, we have power, and we have a sound mind. So I want to challenge you today. Uh, we talked about the renewing of your mind on Sunday, but let me give you the second strategy. Let me give you the second strategy. And this one, all right, get it in your spirit. All right. Number two. A second strategy in maturing and developing our confidence in God. Number two, we've got to declare the word. All right? We've got to declare the word. Our mouth, man, your mouth can be a powerful weapon. Me and my wife always says it. Yeah, our, our victory or our death is inside of our mouth. Uh, when we find ourselves speaking what we believe in, our words hold the power to bring it into existence. Whew. Good God Almighty, I feel like texting that to myself. Our words hold the power to bring into existence that which did not previously even exist. All right, 
Y'all don't believe me. All right, go to go, grab your Bibles, Romans chapter 4. All right, Romans chapter 4, verse number 17. It says that we must call on the things that be not as though they were. God of money. Call on those things that are not as though they were. Because God is God. That is, we serve a God who is omniscient. He is able. <laughs> he is able to create. He can make something out of nothing. All right, y'all, I, I, listen, I, the Holy Ghost done jumped in me already. I, literally, he can take nothing and create something out of nothing. God doesn't need Corona to get your attention. He, <laughs> he doesn't need a virus. He doesn't need a disease. He doesn't need sickness to get your attention. He can take nothing and create something. Out of nothing. When God speaks things into existence, literally, he can create anything out of his creative power. He can speak to nothing and cause nothing to become something out of the power of his word. All right? Prove it, Robbins. Let me give you a Bible for it. Genesis chapter 1. Come on. Y'all walk with me. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1, it says it like this. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form. Wasn't no form. It, the Bible says, and it was void. Darkness was, on the, was, on, was, was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And watch this. There was light. Listen, Abraham, let me give you something else. Abraham believed that if it was necessary, God could create life into the organ of his wife Sarah's body. Abraham had such a faith that he trusted and believed not in the circumstances or what already pre-existed. Now, hear what I'm saying today. Because many of us are living our lives based on our pre-existing conditions. And I want y'all to understand that we cannot operate our lives, not today or tomorrow, based on our past. God gives us wisdom how to live and operate by faith with wisdom and knowledge and understanding for who God is. Abraham knew he was old. Abraham knew his wife was old. He knew that her body did not have the ability perhaps to conceive in her old age, but he had a promise from God. Saints, in this hour, You've got to have his promise. And when you know what his promise is, you understand that it's not her body that's going to conceive it. His faith was the source to create what was coming out of his mouth. Good God Almighty. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to get us to understand that your faith is going to produce what your language or your body cannot do. But it starts when your faith connects to your mouth. And when you have faith, it will speak to your situation. And it can command and demand what is not as though it was. But you have to have the faith. Because when your faith is where it needs to be, your mouth got to line up. Good God Almighty. That's why the Bible, grab your Bible. Oh, I know I'm going to got preacher. Y'all forgive me. Hebrews chapter 10 Verse 23, it says it like this. Let us hold fast <laughs> the profession of our faith without wavering. Y'all, you can't give up now because it doesn't look like it or it doesn't seem like it. Your faith cannot waver. For it says he is faithful. Woo! 
God is faithful. God is omniscient. God is almighty. God is the king. God is the Lord. He is almighty and he's faithful to that that he has promised. Note something, yo. There is one strong reason uh, why uh, we hold to our profession. There's only one reason. There's only one reason why we hold to this profession. The one reason is this. God is faithful to do what he promised. That's the only reason why you're holding on. You're not holding on because your mama did it. You're not holding on because you were in a church, certain church. You're not, you're not holding on because Pastor Robbins is your pastor or whoever, Joe Blow, is your, is your minister. Please understand something. Every, heaven and earth can fall away, but the word of God will never change. And in this hour, we are holding on not to a denomination. We're not holding on to a certain city or to a certain preacher. We're holding on to the promises of God, whatever God said. Why? Because God keeps his word. God does exactly what he said, and he is faithful. Therefore, let us hold to our profession, our profession for hope without wavering. Can I tell you all something? That not only do we hold to our profession, but my God, we've got to learn how to decree a thing. Ooh, good God Almighty. Uh, you ought to put in there, I, 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 you, you ought to start, uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, before, before you start putting it down, you ought to start writing out what you're decreeing that you're believing God. He's getting ready to do in this season. You ought to start writing it down. Matter of fact, before, before we end this line, we're getting ready to decree. We're getting ready to decree literally on this line Today, we're getting ready to decree what God has made promise. Y'all getting ready. Not only I'm getting ready to preach, but y'all getting ready to decree. Y'all getting ready to prophesy on this line here on this line today. Watch this. The Bible says in Job, the Bible says in Job chapter 22, grab your Bibles, Job 22. I know y'all ready. I feel it in my spirit right now. Job 22 verse 28. It says it like this. Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established upon thee. That literally means you will decree a thing and it will stand for you. <laughs> it gives us the idea that when the righteous, <laughs> when the righteous speak, we have the influence with God. My God, we in the righteous decree. When the righteous say it, the point is that even when it doesn't seem like it, even when it doesn't uh, act as if it's going to happen, the level of faith and connection you have with God, that was not as though it can never happen because you spoke it. It has to come to pass. Even when the wicked don't even consider what God is saying, the word from the righteous can decree and declare and change the entire environment. I came to tell you that yet, in this hour, the righteous are still, are still, uh, 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 have the divine connection to God. It's not going to be your mayor. It's not going to be your governor. It's not going to be your job. But the Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer. God help me here today that the eventual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much child of God. We are the ones that have the answer. It's not going to come from the doctor, nor the scientist, nor the hospital. But God told me to tell everybody on this line, the answer is inside your mouth. And until you begin to decree it, until you begin to decree and declare it, and your faith line up with the word of God, it won't take place, but there's at least 10 of you on this line that got the power to change your environment. You got the power to speak to your child. You got the power to speak to your finances, but this has to happen when your faith and your mouth line up together. Good God, have mercy today. If we believe something in our heart, if we believe something in our spirit, We've got to have the confidence to declare it. Oh, God, we've got to have the confidence. Some of us, reason why things haven't happened is because your mouth is quiet. Your mouth is closed. You're still in that same uh, alignment. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, if you want to. Lord, if you do it. No, 
God is not a God of a what if. God is a God of the now. God is not a God of the maybe. He's a God of today. He's a God of yesterday. He's a God of tomorrow. God literally is already in your tomorrow waiting for you and waiting for your faith to catch up to where we are right now. See, this is what we got to understand. The Bible says in Luke, the sixth chapter, verse 45, it says, for the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Mm -hmm. That literally mean, that literally is saying to us that a good man, out of his treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of his heart, his mouth speaketh. All right? So that means that every man reproduces what is in his heart. Note something, y'all, that Jesus is dealing with man's mouth. The word, the words, a man speaks. A man speaks what is in his heart. His words. I want y'all to understand me some. Understand something today. Your words expose your heart. The kind of man you are, the kind of woman you are, is exposed when you open your mouth. <laughs> the kind of person you are is exposed when you open your mouth. You can praise God in church, but can be doubting in your spirit. You can dance the greatest dance in the church, but the truth is out of your heart is what displays what's inside of you. The idea is that the words that come out of us, the Bible lets us know overflowing, overflows or the treasure comes out of our heart. Out of the abundance, out of overflow of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The words of man expose five things about you. Let me give you the five things and I'm going to be done. It gives you five things. And this is what I want you to understand today. There are five things that are exposed when you open your mouth. Number one, it exposes your nature. <laughs> All right. What do you mean, Pastor Robbins? Nature comes out no matter what you try to dress it up as. All right. Let me give you an old story. Y'all know the old story about the pig. The farmer got a pig. He cleaned him up. He washed him down. He gave him a manicure. He turned around and gave him a sponge bath. He washed his hair. He, 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 he put on frankincense and all the fine oils and smells upon him. He turned around and draped him with finery fabrics and clothes and put him out and put him on display. But suddenly, when the pig seen mud, he didn't care about his wash. He didn't care about his finery. He didn't care about his nails being done. He didn't care about all of the things that the, that the farmer had did for him to look good because when he seen slop, he jumped in it. That's because you can dress up something, but you cannot change its nature. God help me here today. Your nature is what comes out when you open your mouth. Number two, that's a, that's a whole different story. I got to save it for another time. All right, number two, uh, man's words expose what is deep down in his heart. That's right. That's the truth. See, people can tell you one thing, but you got to watch the motive behind what they tell you. And your heart <laughs> exposes what's inside of you. They may tell you one thing, but their motive shows you something else. Your motive, your desire, your ambition. And watch this. Even your lack of initiative shows you what's inside of you. There's some people, if you gave them a million dollars, they'd still be broke. There are some people, if you gave them the world, they wouldn't have nothing. And the truth of the matter is, it's not stuff. It's what's inside of them. All right, I got to hurry up. God, are you helping me here? I'm supposed to be teaching, but I feel like I'm preaching. Number three, your words exist. Expose your character. That's right. Your words expose your true character. 
your good and your bad. That's right. Your kindness or your cruelty. <laughs> That's right. Your heart. Your, yes, right. Your words are going to expose your character. Number four. Number four, pastor giving y'all some good stuff. I pray you, listen, y'all better be sharing this. Uh, like it, comment. I need some comments on this thing. Y'all, I, I, I'm going to, matter of fact, I'm going to go back and watch this recording because I want to see what y'all are saying because this right here is blessing somebody literally right now. Number four, I believe I'm on number four. Uh, your words expose your mentality. <laughs> your words expose your mentality, what you think, <laughs> whether your thoughts are pure or whether your or whether your thoughts are are unclean, whether whether you're dirty <laughs> or whether or whether you're happy or whether you're heavenly. Your yes, right. Your words expose your mentality. Some people don't even realize that the reason why they're in what they're in is because you have you have a, a mentality challenge. Uh, you are you are challenged by the way you think. Huh? Let me tell you something. Your location's not your problem. It's your mentality. It, it, it's it's the folk you are attracted to. Some people don't even realize that their mentality is what got them where they are. And it's going to keep you where you are until you say, God, help me change my mind. Lord, all right, I got to hurry up. All right, let me hear, let, let me get through here. Uh, number five, no, number five, your words expose your spirit. Ah, because see, what's in your spirit is going to be exposed by what you say. See, the truth of the matter is some of us, you can never be legitimate because you have adopted a hustle mentality. <laughs> you, you can never be credible because you always believe in doing side jobs and side hustles. And, and, and the, the problem with hustling is most of you can't even do it right. You're hustling backwards. And that's the problem because we have a spirit problem. See, our spirit is oftentimes false. Our spirit is oftentimes wasteful. We've got to change our spirit so that when God is speaking, we don't look at it as though it's a job, but it's an opportunity. We don't look at it as if it's a closed door. Uh, we're looking at it as if God is creating something new for me to happen. But it starts in your spirit. Can I tell you something? I'm going to give you all another, another nugget that's not in my notes. And I want y'all to hear me clearly. Look at me right here in this camera. You've got to understand that in this hour, that God is giving creative abilities to believers. That literally means that if you need everybody to hand you something, you're going to be in trouble. Because in this hour, God wants to use vision. God wants to use abilities. And God wants to give you the resources for you to come into your season. But you've got to have a mentality and a spirit ready to receive what God has for you. Now, now that's a prophetic word for about 10 of y'all on this line today. That God wants to use your gifts. You're an IT person. God wants to use your gifts. Uh, it, it ain't everybody having millions. It's those of you who have talents and those of you who would know how to create things. Those of you who are visionaries. Those of you who are processors that know how to identify and project and put things together. And God wants to connect you to the point where he wants to broaden your scheme and your horizon, but you got to get your words in action. You got to use your words and start calling. Lord, help. all right, calm down, Robbins. I know, I know. I feel it because this is an hour for believers. And if we're going to allow the world to have its legitimacy, then why do we even have the church? Why should we even be called believers? Because this is not their season. This is your season. Hallelujah. All right, let me hurry up. My last one, my last one, and I'm done. Uh, 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 go to Mark chapter 11. Uh, Mark chapter 11. Good God, have mercy today. Mark. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. It says these words. For verily I say unto you, 
that whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things will come to pass and he will have whatever, oh my God, he will have whatever he says. Ah, what do you want, saints? Do you want life or do you want a funeral? Well, it's all in what you say. We should be careful of what we say, not just about people, but y'all, we got to be careful about what we say about ourselves. Ah, you got to be careful about what you think about yourself. God is not a God of condemnation. God is a God of love. Why in the world would you keep on putting condemnation and judgment over you? Well, I did this in my past. Let me help you all out about your past. Child, all of us have done something. The Bible says all have fallen short of the glory of God. And God is not a God to hold back blessings because of your past. Do you not realize that God wants to take your past and use it as your footstool? But you've got to allow God. God to use the, cre the recreatability that's inside of you to manifest his glory to this world. I'm coming to tell y'all today that literally that God is not holding you back, but you're holding yourself back because some of us won't allow the freedom and the liberty of God to flourish in your life. But I want us to understand speaking negatively, uh, speaking negatively about yourself will not give you results. Uh, matter of fact, me and my wife were watching re recently a documentary about how the humans respond to positive versus the negative. And I, we've seen that over 60% of those who were spoken negative to generated not good results, but they determined that their results would be even worse. Even ones who were successful because they spoke negative and what they were doing successfully, uh, it determined their outcome and their future. And I came to tell you today that we have to come into agreement with God and his word and begin to declare what God is saying. All right, I'm going to give you the last scripture and I'm done. Watch this. The Bible says in Romans chapter three, verse number four, it says, God forbid, yea, let God be true. But every man be a liar. <laughs> every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mayest be justified in thy, in thy sayings and mightiest overcome when thou art judged. See, this is what I want y'all to understand, that God never voids his word or his promise. He, ah, uh, God never has and God never will be a liar. God has made promise. And when God made promise, he had made you not to fail, but to flourish. Not a single person in the kingdom of God has been made so that he can suffer. He's not been made that he may lack and that he may go down. But God has created you to be successful. I want you to hear me today. God created you so that you might be victorious. God created you, not that you may not have, but God wants to give you plenty. God wants to give you harvest. And I want you to understand another word. God wants to give you a return on everything you sold in. But We've got to go back to our scriptures and remind ourselves of what God said. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord <laughs> say so. Whom has redeemed us from the hand of the enemy? Can I tell you something? Lack does not have you. Pity does not have you. Sickness does not have you because God has redeemed you. And if you are redeemed, you got the power to say so. Now I know I told you all earlier that this is the hour that we got to prophesy and we must speak and we must declare. Well, this is the moment. I want every one of you to get on this line and begin to decree and declare that your house has wealth and riches. You know what 
what God done spoke to you. Decree and declare your child saved. Decree and declare your body is under the Because he says it, I believe it. Therefore, everything that God ever promised is got to happen. You cannot die. You must live. Victory is in the mouth of the believer. Come on, saints. What do you believe? What is it that God spoken to you? What has he said to you? And if he has not spoken, then you ain't listening. But God is saying it. God is saying live. God is saying life. God is saying victory. God is not saying sickness. God is not saying disease. God is saying, I want to be your true God. God is saying, put my kingdom first. And all these things shall be added unto you. Come on, saints. Decree and declare what the Lord is saying to you. Let the redeemed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And this is your moment. This is your hour. But you've got to believe it. You've got to decree it. You've got to declare it. That's how you mature. That's how you develop. Y'all, that's how you grow. Stop waddling in sickness. Stop staying in separation. Just because you're isolated from people does not mean God has isolated you from him. Can I challenge you today? God wants you to be closer to him. That is the enemy's deception that's causing us to miss him. I don't know about y'all today, but I cannot miss God at all. I can't afford to miss what God is saying. But the only way that that can happen, I got to get in his word. I got to get back on my knees. I got to start praying to God. I got to start fellowship and having communication with the Lord. Sometimes, y'all, you got to go back to your prayer closet. Sometimes, y'all, it's not even, it's not, sometimes it's not even about separation. It's learning how to tap into him. Sometimes it's to walk around the block. Sometimes it's to drive around the city. Speak into the Lord and let God speak to you. And when he speaks, start speaking it out loud. Begin to declare what God is saying to you. Begin to call upon those finances. Begin to call upon those dreams. Begin to call upon those visions. And not just call upon them, manifest it. Let those things come into your life. Let those things develop and happen for you. I don't know about you all, but I believe that God is literally causing the world to be at your footstool. But you as a believer have got to trust him. You as a believer have got to grow into it. And until you grow into it, you're going to determine whether your victory or your funeral is in your mouth. But today, I choose life. Today, I choose victory. Today, I choose hope. Today, I choose faith in him. Today, I choose confidence and knowing the God that I serve. Come on, y'all. I'm getting ready to pray. There's some of you that have prayer requests. There's some of you that's being challenged. I want you to email me at admin at compelfamily.org. Again, uh, admin at compelfamily.org. I want your prayer requests. Those are those of you that I'm praying I've received. Those of you that have put requires, uh, requests in for your family. I'm praying over those requests. I'm praying over all of those that have been challenged with sickness. We've been praying for those every day, seeking the face of the Lord. And thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your care for me. But in this moment, I believe that there's somebody on this line that is dealing with some things. There are preachers across this world, especially my, our, my itinerant brothers that have been canceled out all across this country. Those, those are pastors that are worried about their churches. There are, there are parents that are on this line that are worried about the condition of their children because we can't get to our kids. There are those of you that are concerned about your job after this is over. I want you to understand, cast, cast your cares upon him because God careth. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says he careth for you. God wants to care for you. God wants to literally take your burdens and take your issues and put them on him. We can't live in fear. We can't live in worry. But we've got to live in the confidence of God, understanding, Lord, I rest in you. My life is in your hands. I'm going to use wisdom. I'm going to use knowledge. But I will not let the enemy stop me. I will not allow the enemy to block a blessing or hinder me from going forward in my life. I want you to understand, every one of you that are listening to me today, God has a plan for your future. 
and it's up to you to receive what God is getting ready to do. Come on, let's pray. Everyone stretch your hands towards that screen. Whatever you're listening to, your iPhone, your iPad, your laptop, whatever you're listening to, your television, your device, your smart devices, let's believe God today and let's trust what God is doing for your life. Father, I decree and declare it now in the name of Jesus that each and every one of your people that are listening to this line, we are not living a life of separation for nothing, not a, not a season of isolation for nothing, but God, you have us here that we may be in tune with you. I pray today, Lord, that you would open up our minds, our hearts, that we may understand you. For you're the God who is the author and finisher of all things, of all seasons. And Father, we trust you. We believe you. Father, if there's anything in our life that's, that's causing us to miss you, that's causing us not to hear from you, Lord, forgive us. For in this moment, God, we need you more than the world. We need you more than the air we breathe. For God, you are the provider of life. And I thank you today that you've chosen us for this moment and this season. Thank you for life today, Lord. Thank you for opportunity to thank you, Lord, for waking us up and starting us on our way, giving us the activities of our limbs and giving us a mind to think and a hand, a hand to carry and our feet to walk. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a heart to trust and obey you today. Lord, we trust you. Hallelujah. I pray and I ask, Lord, that as you shine upon us, as you reason upon our thoughts and our minds, that you would give us what to say. We, did, we pray and we come into agreement with these that are connected with us in ministry that we have the power of understanding, knowing that our words have power and our God has all power. <laughs> and Father, we be careful what to say. For when we say it, we decree and declare that you are God and there is none beside you. You are the name that is above every name. And we honor you, we bless you. Let our words, let our acts be not in vain, but let everything that is said and done through our life give you glory and give you honor. And most of all, God, that you would be pleased. I pray that the faith of God fail them not. God, give them strength. Add to their faith even now in the name of Jesus. We'll bless you and God, we will honor you. And we will give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless each and every one of you on today. I thank God for all of you. I thank God for you joining in, listening with us once again, tuning in live right here at Compel Family Life Center on your screen. In just a few moments, there is going to be an opportunity for you to give. I want everyone now to sow a $20 seed into the kingdom of God, especially those of you that the enemy has been challenging you, especially in your mind, in your thoughts, and also some of the things that you've even said, some things you've even thought you haven't spoken out, but it's coming out in your actions. I want every one of you today to come into agreement with the ministry today that we will believe God. The building's closed, but God is still working. Um, the, the building may not be in operation, but God is operating every single day. God is open for business. And I'm going to tell you now, God is raining upon his people. God's getting ready to rain upon you. But you got to come into covenant with him. I want you to sow a seed, literally of a $20 seed. And we're going to use that seed today in covenant with God, believing God that the harvest is getting ready to take place in your life, in your family. Begin to decree and declare it right now. Wealth and riches are in your home. The day of lack is over. God is supplying everything that I have need of. If you want to give today, I want to give you a couple options. You can give by cash app. The symbol cash app sign, literally, the symbol for cash, and then CFLCMKE. That is our, our cash app that will come directly to the ministry. Again, the cash symbol, CFLCMKE. Or if you're in the city or if you're outside the city, if you have the app called Givelify. Just type in Compel Family Life Center. And then we're right here in the city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I want you to take a moment and sow. Those of you who are not connected to a ministry, it is your opportunity to sow a seed into the tithing. Uh, you can give uh, on Givelify to your tithe. You can give your offering and let it be a blessing. You can give PayPal. Or if you want to send in your, your contributions, you can send it to 6918 West Brown Deer Road, right here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53223, right here at Compel 
Family Life Center. Also, I want to stay connected to each and every one of you. If I don't have your email address, there's another way that you can connect with us. You can literally connect by text message. Text this number, 414-404-9404, and connect this word, uh, type this word, Compel Connect, all one word. Again, 414-404-9404, and text this word, Capel Connect, all one word, and you'll be in connection with us in the ministry for all updates, all pertinent information that comes across to us. We are so thankful. I pray that this ministry is being a blessing to you. Although we're not together, please understand. All right, take your arms, wrap it around yourself. All right, mm, that's from Pastor. You all know I am a very visual, very uh, relational pastor. I am so concerned about you, and I want all of you to know I love each and every one of you. This is actually compelled. Uh, we would be in our five-year celebration. We're five years old this month. And I know right now we're unable to celebrate, but I'm so thankful for what God is doing and how God has allowed each and every one of us to be connected. I believe our church is the greatest church on this side of heaven. And I want all of you to know, thank you for your love. Thank you for your consistent support. It is through your tithing. It is through your giving. All of you, even you well-wishers that are now tuning in with us, I may be your internet pastor. Um, this is your, uh, your giving provides these services that we can still stay connected to one another. It's so important, especially now that I can't see you like I want to. But please always know, for my family, for myself and our First Lady, Dr. Lacey Robbins, we love each and every one of you. Our prayers are there for you. We, 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 we were not together every day, but understand our prayers are with you each and every day. The Lord bless you. I love you with Jesus' joy. And I always want you to remember this at Compel Family Life Center. And don't you forget it. I don't care how long it's been. Your best is yet to come. I will see you soon. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. You have just been blessed by the ministry of Compel Family Life Center under our leader, Superintendent Aaron Robbins. Join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. right here. Become a participant in worship here at Compel. Give on GiveLify, Cash App, dollar sign CFLCMKE, or by mail at 6918 West Brown Deer Road, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53223. You can always visit us online at compelfamily.org. Until next time, remember, your best is yet to come.